Would you like to see your garage like this, like matched up? <laughs> no, right? No. <laughs> Obviously. Micro Indices has a product for you. Just buy this tool trolley and you can pull your, put your tool in that. Your garage will be clean. <laughs> I'm giving you some company profile. Micron Industry started its journey in 2006. Micron set up as a partnership with the 30 years of experience. Its geographical location is in Gujarat. Gujarat is a state in India. My big four P's for the Micron Industry. The product. We are initially just uh, introducing two products. One will be the multi-purpose trolley. Second is medical trolley. Place. We will do door-to-door -door selling in the beginning. Also attend the trade shows for the big, big orders. And also in, in USA, all counties have a list, like which new business is going to open. Price. Multi-purpose tool trolleys price will be $140. Medical trolley will be $300. Also, we will offer some discounts on the big orders. Promotions. Personal selling, so we will be able to create in the personal relationship. It's a whole year business, there is nothing seasonal or anything in that. So we can run our business whole year and it won't affect. And also, competitors don't use the same strategy to sell their products. Some of the costs associated with this business in the beginning, the startup cost would be $96,200. The final cost for the industry will be $93 for the multipurpose and for the medical tool trolley will be $223. Sales, we are expecting that in the first year, we will sell 820 multiple tool trolleys. In the second year, we will sell 1,310. In the third year, we will do 1,430. And what with the medical trolley, we are targeting 430 in the first, in the second, 640, and in the third, 720. Income statement. According to the, if we make those kind of sales, in the first year, we will still lose like around $14,000. In the second year, we will start making profit of 7,000. In the third year, it will be 15. Our organizational chart. My colleague is located in India. Chintan Patel will be the CEO over there who will handle the operations in India. Also, we have Manoj Patel there who is a designer and developer. I will handle the operations in USA. So the president in US. To help me out, I will have Akash Patel with me. I can offer you a pen if you want to write a chair. <laughs> okay, so I suppose if you want to hear more. requirement in the center of design and manufacture better, safer, and maintenance-free products which help customers achieving progress and prosperity. The vision will be to develop, a <coughs> to develop and produce more products which can help our customers do business and achieve great results with the reduced efforts and develop distribution network throughout the world. Some of the keys to success offer our customers affordable quality that will last longer, customize any piece as requested by a customer, and if customizing a piece won't quite work, create the whole new whole new piece from the scratch exactly to the however customer want. Come to the description, started in 2006, set up as a partnership with two other partners, more than 30 years for experience. Company's geographic location, this is the map of India, and here we are located in Gujarat. And if I zoom that, and this is the Gujarat, we are nearly located, this is Ahmedabad, the industrial capital over there. We are located here. And the benefit for the geographical location is, for the all international business, we need to ship that from the Mundra port. And Mundra port is kind of 102 miles from our factory. So shipping cost is low in the, in the beginning with this. Market and industry analysis, market segmentation. Our target customers for the multiple personal trolley will be auto shops, small retailers, and the home garage. For the medical card customers will be hospitals, 
physician cleaning, dentist, and pharmacy. SWOT analysis, strength, low price, marketing. Marketing in sense, like because we are reaching them door to door, so they would have better contact with us rather than just going into the store and buy their weaknesses. This business is an international business, so sometimes if the exchange rate really change, that can hurt our profit. The longer delivery time, if customers are giving a big orders, then we have to like contact India and then come here, so it take a longer time. Opportunities, expand different markets, threats. Tough competition, also, if someone like me, other person have a strong background in India, they can also come to this business like easily, and the market situation. Marketing for peace. I will go detail here now. The product, as I said, like we have two products. First one is the multi-purpose stool trolley. We can use that in the auto repair shop, also in the garage, in your home or business, small retailer store, and also eventually we are trying to be in the buyers list of uh, big retailers where other competitors are selling their products right now. The medical trolley can be used in the hospitals physician clinics, dentistry, pharmacy, and also nursing home. Continue product can be redesigned for the customers with the big orders. Uh, so different purpose at different places, provide convenience in all the applications, and also price and durability will be different than our competitors. In the beginning, it will be a door-to-door -door selling, Personal meeting with the business owners and small business owners. Uh, county have a list, so we can get that list and know like who gonna open a new business in the nearer area, and by that way we can reach to them. Provide catalog when required. Attend trade trade fairs. By attending trade fairs, it helps us to know like which are the big companies, and also we can meet our executives over there, and those will be the executives who can give us a big order. And also in the future, start online promotion. Pricing. As I mentioned earlier, multi-purpose tool trolley will cost a customer $140 per piece, and the medical trolley costs $300. At the same time, our competitors are charging like $170 to $230 for the multi-purpose tool trolley, and for the medical tool trolley, they are charging $350 to $500, and we also give them discounts on the big orders. Promotion. Door-to-door -door selling is the biggest uh, uh, advantage we have in the beginning. Have some leads which can help to get a business in the beginning. Like as I mentioned earlier, like Akash Patel, who is with me as my business partner, who have definitely some contacts. So that will help in the beginning. If it's not a seasonal business, we can do business whole year. Negligible competitors when talk about door-to-door -door promotion. Competitors mostly use big, uh, mostly use big retailers to sell their product. Now, we go into the financials. Here is the startup cost. Startup was come to like $96,200. But if we see here, then the working capital is 30000 and we buy two new cars for our both partners, so that would be 40000 That's why it's ninety-six. This gives some details about how the costing was and how I'm saying the $93 will cost me. The fabrication weight for the multiple tool trolley will be 27 kg. Her rate, rate per kg will be 125, so 34. Some other parts is like $4 worth. Paints and wheels, 32. And shipping per trolley will be $23. Same here for the medical tool trolley. The weight would be 27 kg. The rate is higher because the material is different. So 165 other parts would be $5, paints and will 30 and then shipping $23. That's how it comes to 223 Cash flow. So this one is, uh, whichever you see, you see the smaller ones, those are our inflows. It means whatever sales we make and what money we get, and this is our expenses. So it's gradually, the inflow is increasing and the cost remains kind of same. So we're expecting to make a profit in the first year, in the last month. And I just put this uh, a cash flow for the third year, where our inflow will be 103. For the second quarter, also 103. For the 
third quarter is 103, and the fourth quarter it will be 107. Here is the flow where it shows for the whole year. So in the first year, we are actually making loss, but then it's gradually increasing. Here's our income statement, what's our profit? In the first year, we are losing money for 14,180. In the second year, we are making profit of 7,000. In the third year, we are making a profit of 15,390. This is a graph I just put to show like, uh, this one is the income. I mean, here is a year one. Income, expense, and profit. So this is our income. From here, it's going up. Expense is also growing up, but it's kind of slow up, up below that. And this is our profit, and it's gradually growing. Our organization chart, as we mentioned earlier, micro industry will be of Chintan Patel Angles, the uh, operations there. Manoj has helped out, me, President here, and Akash Patel helped me out. This is the timeline for that. Budgeting a capable organization that will be done by the end of the first year. Budget, obviously, it goes for third, three years. Policy and procedures. Benchmarking will be at the end of each quarter, support systems, new market, leadership. Here, market share growth. Here, we'll try to grow our market like throughout the three years. Brand recognition, also we try that, and customer satisfaction. Thank you. So. <laughs> Questions, please. Okay, Jennifer? Um, and maybe I missed it, um, and I apologize if I did. Um, what did you need for your startup, and where did the funds come from? Funds will come from the micro industries. Oh, okay. Um, oh, and I just had one comment. I'm sorry. Sure. Uh, one last comment. Um, I liked the graphs that yeah. illustrated your financial statements instead of straight financial statements that. Oftentimes, when I'm sitting in a um, in the audience, I, I become blinded by financial statements. So I thought that was a really nice way to illustrate it and, and, and keep Thank my you. interest. I did questions for president. <laughs> <laughs> he, he came to my office hours, so we had a conversation. Oh, okay. I'm too sorry. <laughs> <laughs> These guys didn't come. So. <laughs> but go ahead. Um, but I have those details yeah. if you have any questions about yeah. that, how the financials. So. And that's important because for presentation purposes, uh, you guys did an excellent job, but part of it is information overload. Right. But when you want a, a picture, which is a graph, it goes over a lot better, but you better have the details like you do. Uh, so when the person's actually thinking about writing the check, they actually can check it out. So that's a good point. Uh, Brett, you had a question? Um, no, I think I'm good. Okay. <laughs> sure. You don't want to be me? <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, no, guys, ask no, questions. So overall, that going to help. Them. Overall, I think it's a good venture because it's it's already established, right? And so you're you're kind of opening up a new branch of an already kind of established industry, right? So yes. you'll have you'll have those sorts of challenges. If you, I mean, if you tend to go that route over here, so there's things that like we talked about earlier, we have to consider shipping costs and all that. I know mm -hmm. that you said that they were low. Um, but there, yeah, there, there is also what I was going to ask is, um, what was your startup? 96,000. 96,000. Can I go there? 3,000 for two cars. Maybe we buy cheap cars in the beginning. Put it in the truck. <laughs> We also had a conversation about that in the office hours, and this is, he's actually planning to do this for real. And, and one of the things you wanted, one of the advantages of uh, a business, having your own businesses, and, and I don't want to sound rami esque you want to pay as little taxes as possible. Mm -hmm. And so if they are going to actually meet clients and customers, mm -hmm. you want your car, you want your iPad, your phone, and those to be business expenses. But I, I would recommend a minivan or something you can carry trolleys in instead of the car. I'm yeah, actually yeah. good. I completely lost my train of thought. I was just, I'm glad you, you guys asked about startup. <laughs> <laughs> start I know, but I, I can't remember what I was going to ask about that. 96000 that's all I need. Great. <laughs> Where's my checkbook? Sure. <laughs> so, are you going to partner with like a Home Depot? 
people or in the like in my uh, store or not in the beginning, not in the beginning. But I will try to be in the buyers list of them. That they buy tool trolleys from me. Like the biggest bigger company here in USA, if you talk about like Adsell or uh, other company Craftsman, they they sell their products that way. They have their products in Sam's Club. If you go, if you go in the Sears, everywhere else. So that's how they are selling right now their products. But no other companies in the USA right now going door to door and selling products to them. That's what I was actually going to ask you: is how do you plan to counter the the other, your competitors because they're going to sell on value, right? They're going to they're going to say that their product is, is, is you're selling, you're, but you spend an extra money for the quality. So how are you going to kind of counter that and say that okay, I'm selling it for cheaper, but it's also it also has the quality that Craftsman has. Yeah, I mean, we, we thought about that also. I did some interviews, and one of the interesting interviews was there where Axel, if you ever heard about that company, who also manufactured tool trolleys, and his interview was that he sold, he told him that when you're actually buying the commodity, you're not going to see like what brand is that. It means if you're making a house and putting wood in there, you're not going to ask like what kind of material is there or something like that. So, and also, like, uh, if someone is really buying and interested in buying the tool trolley, they obviously gonna know, obviously gonna check, like, what is their weight. If you see online, you might find a tool trolley for about ninety dollars for your home, but you see the weight that would be ten kg, and even you put like ten kg on top of that, it will bend. Go ahead. Sorry. This is an observation. Sure. Very engineering-like presentation. It was very mechanical. Most people don't care about the way when they're ordering, except for the cost of the shipping. So, my 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 comment was more lines of I saw a large difference in price between your competitors and your product. I didn't see mention who these competitors were and why the price difference exists, so that I can understand if the end user would have a perception of inferior quality because of a lesser cost. You know what I'm saying? That's what I was looking for a little bit. I didn't see it, so I was asking who are the competitors that you're gauging against and. How do you expect to fix the perception of the price point being so so diverse? I mean, you almost have like a thirty-five dollars difference. Yeah. The major difference would be that in the, it's it's a labor cost. Other difference in that is because we are definitely selling, planning to sell a tool trolley, but at the same time we are manufacturing agriculture equipments. So the material we buying for the many agriculture equipments is the same for the tool trolley too, because we're still buying the and the reason is if you buy in bulk, it's always cheaper. So we will have a cheaper material. Yeah. And he's doing this for real, so take the gloves off. Yeah, ask, ask all the questions. <laughs> well, I have a question about your, your target market. Mm -hmm. And I want to say that when you first presented this at the very beginning, yeah. um, someone I think maybe threw out like nail and beauty salons, I think, to, to, to maybe target. Mm -hmm. I think that would be a great place um, yeah. to also get, in addition to the medical and and the nursing home, which I think is, is a great place to go. Um, but yeah, to store these hair dryers and brushes and nail polish and all of these things, I mean, yeah. they all have those kinds of trolleys, so I think that might be a good place too. Thank you. And also, um, I just need to do some research on that because I want to know like whether they're using the steel tool trolley or the plastic trolleys. Oh. Because some people also yeah, use I plastic trolleys. I plastic. mean, if you go in green oh. color every day, you might know. <laughs> yeah, I, I think for, for nails, it's plastic. Oh, I think okay. for salons, yeah. for hair salons, since it's more like yeah. heavy duty what, items yeah. that are going in, I think they, they might be a little more sturdy. Okay. Than sure. mm -hmm. Thank you. And maybe yeah. for product development, you can actually eventually, if you grow more and more, mm -hmm. you can actually cater it to you know individual households. Because again, if you yeah. can design it, a little bit differently, maybe, you know, I mean, yeah. could be sure. I mean, right now I'm also targeting the home home garages, so that's there. But yeah, inside use, yeah. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, so it, say this does work in, in, I mean, you have a good plan in place. What, what sorts of things do you have to satisfy the demands as your, as your sales go up mm -hmm. and as things get more complicated? What sorts of things do you have in place to handle that? Like to handle the demands of your customers and, and the supply and demand as it increases. How, how are you going to, so it's you and you have one other person, right? Yeah. And, and what, once things start to pick up, you're going to need more. Do you have ideas on how you're going to structure that and how it's going to work out? And like property, plant, equipment, all these sorts of things that you're going to need? 
we de in the beginning we definitely gonna get a warehouse and warehouse from there we're gonna supply if it is an individual order we're gonna supply from there okay in the beginning but yes if it is a big order and definitely let's say like when I make the calculations and I get the shipping cost, it's like 500 uh, tool trolleys you can put in a one container. So if someone is giving me the $500 order, I mean 500 orders, I can directly ship to their facility. Okay. This is working in real estate sense. I see the startup cost. I don't see the warehouse in there. Oh, I don't sure. see the forklift. I don't That's see me. all the trucks and that kind of logistic, additional logistic equipment. No, those things are going to be required. I don't see the operators in the warehouse. They're going to be doing that kind of work. I don't see no, no, it's customer service. You know, all that stuff. You're going to need that too. Like, sure. The other question was geographic footprint. Um, exactly. Do you have a plan for how you're going to expand geographically? Because you have to physically move these items, so you have to obviously figure out those costs as well. I'm assuming you're shipping into New York or something along those lines. Wow. Uh, I mean, I see where you're shipping them out of. I didn't see where you're shipping them into, and if that was a strategic location for you, and where you're going to place your warehouse. And, well, well, let's tackle the, the warehouse first. You, okay. you had a chart okay. there. Yeah. Well, uh, you also, what I'm doing the shipping costs, how I calculate the shipping costs. Okay. So, the Macro to the Mundra port in India, the cost will be 175. From Mundra to New York port, that will be 1,550. New York to Chicago, and our loading will be 1,900. Okay. Labor is high, definitely. So, the total will be 3,625. If I can put 500 pieces in one trolley, I mean in one container, it would be 725 for tool trolley as of the warehouse. But from the warehouse to the customer's location, that would be extra $15. And that's how I come to 22.50 is equal to 23. Now you're saying that the warehouse is in New York? No, warehouse will be here. So that includes shipping from New York to here? Yes. The New York port to Chicago plus unloading the $1,900. Oh, Yes. Okay. And I think his marketing strategy, his initial target market, he's not trying to do the U.S. Yeah, because he's part of his strategy is to go and solicit business in person. That's part of the differentiation, right? Yep. So it's a it's a narrow, narrower geographic area. But that's a good point. Later on, as he expands, th these are important things to go. So if you so go beyond the three year, you need to think also about that. Just very interesting when you're getting yeah. equipment shipped to the yeah. warehouse. Yeah. You need a forklift and a forklift driver to get off the truck because it's on pallets. So you're going to need that. You need an operator. You're going to need some other stuff that's not, I'm just telling you, you need a little bit of stuff. And uh, I had a couple other questions with some of the other parts of this. You went for real. Um, but I'd like somebody else to talk to you. Don't want to I don't know. Monopolize. No, no, go ahead. I, I think he actually wants this, so Ooh, he anticipated Joe having many questions. <laughs> Standpoint, it seems like you break even somewhere in the third year, mm -hmm. and even though your investment is relatively low, your return is very low as well. And, it, and what really worried me a little bit was the fact that you had a larger increase from year one to year two, mm -hmm. but you had a slower increase from year two to year three, as in you were actually tapering off. Um, I didn't see what I would expect to be the opposite, where you start picking up and going. And that's one question. Uh, the other question is related to the question that Fred had about. Um, what do you physically have in place if you hit that big order with Home Depot mm -hmm. so you can actually supply that volume? You know? Yeah, and the reason why uh, the first year is really low because I thought I'm starting the business so I even won't have like a great idea about the market or how it goes because that's why I'm assuming like a very low sell. What I, uh, what I assume is I'm just I'm working like 20 days a month and each day and I'm on all my I'm only selling 40 trolleys. So that's kind of low in the beginning, but if, you, if I go in the second year, I can plan like, oh, maybe I can sell more. And let's say, in the second year, I think I have the sales return here too. Uh, in the second year, in the first quarter, I'm planning to sell like 320 22, uh, multiple tool trolleys. But even if I get like a $200 order from somewhere, because by that time, I will have more knowledge about the market and stuff. So even I can sell 300 by out of two, the, those 200 coming from just one order. So it will be a gradual increase. The whole plan, the whole. And also like uh, if you're telling the other expenses, I mean this is how my cash flow works. This is, this would be the selling the 5,600 for the medical industry. If I sell like 20, I will get 6,000. These are all my expenses to make one a tool trolley. 
it costs like 93, so I 93 into 40 will be 3,720. I'm also paying me 3,000 per month, also Akash 3,000, some utilities, insurance, gas and car maintenance, warehouse, total outflow. And that's why I mean, also have. In the beginning, I said I have 30,000 cash cap working capital, then cash in, cash out, so I just, and that's how it goes here. Joe asked a good question though. And I, I, maybe you could go back to the chart where it shows whether the the margin changes from yeah. it becomes lower it's between two and three. Do you have the yearly uh, numbers for the sales? Yeah, well, well, income statement would be good. That's what we're, yeah. This is for the third year. Okay. Not together. Uh, do, I mean. no, do, do you have where you compare the three years on a chart? I have the chart. Yeah, yeah. Let, let's see the chart. And I think that's you what you're talking about, right, Joe? Right. Chart that you had? Okay. Is it like next one? Right there. Yeah. It's right there. Yeah. Look at that. You see how the rate decreases with the profit? You know, from year one to year two, it's a higher rate of increase in profit, and it flattens out. The profit is actually increasing. It's going yeah. up. But it's increasing at a slower rate from year yes. two to year three. That's what I was saying. Instead of typically you want it to start ramping up faster, and it's not, that's what we're worrying me as an investor. Oh, I, I, I think I, I get the question now. And this happens a lot with businesses, right? If you severely underestimate your sales for the first year, it's really, really low. So year one to two is a big jump. But you, then you can become profitable, and it's more realistic, though. So year two to three, this is why large companies, when they're publicly traded, they have difficulty doing growth rates. Their revenues might be growing, but in fact, the, the year to year comparison right. changes. So that, that's something I, okay, that's a and good point. Out of the presentation, if I talk, then I might be also interested, once I know my business, how it works, I might hire some people who can also sell for me, like a sales people. That's also one idea. Another thing, like in the shipping cost, right now I'm just calculating the shipping cost, shipping cost based on, there will be only my items in there. But there are some other alternatives when you ship from India to here, it's like, there are some companies, let's say, who want to supply stocks here. The stocks will be here. And for them, the shipping, the container, won't have enough weight, but they will cover the whole size. So in that case, we can merge with them, and that's those kind of facilities, I mean, those kind of stuff people do. So you know, in one container, there will be some stocks and some of the tool trolleys. And that's how the shipping also could be low. And another comment I have that's related to all lines, you know, you make a stainless steel version, which is for the medical industry. I work for some devices for medical industry, and what I found is they're not very price sensitive. They're really interested in quality. They don't care if the price is, is more or less. They want what they want. Uh, what I have found, though, is that smaller independents, like, say, an independent dentist here and there, they might be a little bit more price sensitive, not so much. And if you had a medical sales representative, that might help you. I think you might have difficulty selling a lower price product and might perceive as it being lower quality than the current status quo standard, especially in a larger chain of medical facilities. As I just suggested. Good point. And in, in that in that sense, it's a benefit that we are going person to person. So if I'm coming to you, and I, 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 I can tell you that why it's low, what we are doing, and the quality is the same. Also, we can explain them like, okay, the, maybe tool trolley you see, that would be like just weight of 20 kg, where my tool trolley is 27 kg. So we have that preference to convince them when we're actually going door to door. And, and I'm not negating that. Another suggestion, <laughs> try to have a hook how you can prove to them that it's better besides the weight. Because the weight is a very good engineering way of measuring it. Good but it's point. not a good way to, for a marketing individual to sell it. You have to have a hook to show them or prove them. How would you prove to someone who doesn't know anything about engineering that your trolley is better? You need that if you're going to sell it. And, and that's the reason why, and this is not just true for this business, whenever you're doing a plan, you have to think about the client, the customer, understand them, where they are, their level of understanding, and you'd use language, and you use a pitch that depends. And this is why when you say medical equipment, well, someone who is working with a large hospital is very different from the doctor's office and so on. So when you're starting up a business, you, you can't go after everyone. So you, you have to be very targeted, and it's better to go after a, a smaller group that you really understand where there's less competition in the beginning. And so you know how to make that pitch. 
right? So that's a good point. And, and you're right, in, in that, those kinds of industries, they do tend to be price insensitive uh, there. And, and the perceived quality is important. But perceived is the critical thing. Perceived means it's what's in their head, right? Not necessarily the objective engineering density or whatever um, that you're doing there. And, and for some people, it may be that that's what you use, and that could be one of the things that you can explain and to do that. Okay. So maybe then I will use the Indian gas strategy. Give them a higher price and then give them a discount. <laughs> 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 yes, yes, yes. Okay, okay. Thank George. So okay, I think George has a question. Yes, so. I'm sorry, one quick question. Yes? Okay. Um, no, you're fine, you're fine. Yeah. This question is very simple. So, I guess you design a specific prototype that you're intending to, to sell, but would you be willing to customize yes. the tone? Yeah. Is that embedded into your costing strategy? Yeah, because even the, in India we are doing this kind of business, the costing is always depends on how much fabrication material you are using. And on that, we calculate the rate. So let's say if someone comes to us and tells us like, I need a piece, we will ask them, how much that gonna weigh? What's what the weight of that piece? Uh, piece. So if they are saying it's 50 kg, then 15 to 1.25, and then <coughs> in 15 to 125, we will include the labor and other stuff, and that's how we give them the price. Thank you. I would hope you'd customize only if it's a large order. Definitely, I, I said <laughs> that like two or three times. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I will customize yeah. for the big okay. orders. Okay. And and then you have to have some measure of what big is. Right, so, and particularly if, you know, sometimes you might want to do a prototype just with the promise of getting a huge client. So, uh, an, an so, organization doing that, but, and sometimes there's a risk, they may not like it, and, but you don't want to be, uh, you know, on just in time, on demand, customized, you could run into a lot of trouble there. Okay, any other questions or comments? Yeah, oh, I'm sorry, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Okay, okay. <laughs> No, no, that's actually a, a yeah, good good great. point, yeah. That was it. And there, there are lots of those. Okay. Okay, no more questions? Okay, thank you very much, Tarun. Thank you. Okay. Now, are you going to distribute those pens? <laughs> <laughs>